Hello everyone. In this particular lecture, we are going to learn about ecology and climate change. Okay, so what exactly is ecology and what is its relevance? Let's have a look. So ecology basically is a scientific study of reciprocal relationship between organisms, which are which include microbes, plants, animals, and man, with that of the environment. So basically when I say that there is a reciprocal relationship means that it is a relationship which is taking place in a to and fro manner. This is also impacting this and this is also impacting this. Now what all are these entities, these two? So this include plants and animals over here and this part over here includes the environment that is the envelope which is surrounding them. Environment is the surroundings that we have for us right it deals with the ways in which organisms are molded by their environment so the way in which an organism is adapting according to the environment is being dealt by ecology how they make use of environmental resources including energy flow and mineral cycling so ecology also includes that how the resources which are surrounding us that is the environmental resources are being uh, utilized or are being uh, used by us uh, including the process of energy flow as well as mineral cycle. The term ecology was coined in 1868. It is made out of two Greek words oikos meaning home or the place to live and logos meaning study. So basically it's a study of where you are living that is of home that is the surrounding of us. Literally, it is the study of home by nature, home of nature basically. And it was done by a German biologist named Ernest Haeckel. So, this is where a factual question might arise. That term ecology was given by who? The answer would be Ernest Haeckel. And it was given in year 1868. Symbiosis. So, we have already talked about the reciprocal relationship. So, symbiosis is close to what uh, the uh, reciprocity between two particular entities. Here it says that symbiosis is a close ecological relationship between the individuals of two different species. We are talking about two different species and the relationship between them. Right? So, between individuals of two different species. How are two different species are interacting with each other would be known as your symbiosis. So, ecologists use different term for each type of symbiotic relationship. So, let's have a look at the symbiotic relationships and its types. So, this becomes a little important for you. So, kindly pay attention. Mutualism. So, mutualism is the very first type of symbiotic relationship in which both the species benefit from the relationship. So, in an environment, this particular entity is living and so is this particular entity. These are the two entities living in this environment. So, when they are sharing a common space, that is the environment, this particular entity does certain work which helps this particular entity and in return, whatever is the activity of this particular entity ends up helping the first one. So, mutual, it is called as mutualism. Both the species are benefiting each other. Next is commensalism. So, one species is getting the benefit and other is unaffected. So, uh, consider the example of a tree. So, a tree is there and on this particular tree, a particular uh, plant is growing all around. So, it's called bale in Hindi. So, what this particular bale requires is that it is growing around and for its growth, what it needs is this particular tree. Otherwise, this particular male won't be able to grow. So, this particular plant actually needs this uh, existence of this tree. But the tree is not getting affected by the usage of this particular plant as well. The tree would exist even if this plant which is growing on uh, in and around of it, the tree would still continue to exist if that thing didn't happen. So, in commensalism, what's happening is this species that is this particular entity is getting benefited and that this particular tree is unaffected by it. Similar is the uh, process of uh, let's say consider a particular deer and you would see that on the countryside that there would be certain uh, uh, small birds who would be sitting on that particular deer. So what happens is that those birds are feeding off of the 
the dead remains on that particular deer skin or the small microbes which are actually residing into the fur of that particular deer so what's happening is the deer is remaining unaffected while the smaller birds are getting benefited out of those particular microbes which they are consuming now the next is that of parasitism so in parasitism one specific species gets the benefit and the other is harmed by the relationship right so one particular species is getting benefited and the other is harmed so if you consider the example of a particular leech if it gets stuck on a person or another animal skin what is happening is this leech is feeding off of this particular let's say species called let's call it a it could be human as well so the leech is feeding off of the blood of this particular entity so it is benefiting the leech but at the same time it is harming this particular entity because it is losing blood out of it so that is the example of parasitism and for competition the neither species benefit from the relationship that no species is getting benefit from the relationships so basically both are getting harmed let's say there is a food source in a particular jungle and there is a tiger and a leopard both are different species but the food source remain the same common so both of these are competing to actually get hold of this particular food item so they are competing with each other so neither of them are actually benefiting out of it in fact they are getting harmed by it because common food source is being divided in between these two species in neutralism both the species are unaffected by the relationship this species was also remaining in the same environment so is this but their activities are not impacting each other in any possible way so this is all about your symbiosis all right let's have a look at these particular points terrestrial and water ecosystems so the the ecosystems of terrestrial and water are basically the organized natural factories for us and which are giving rise to produce all that is required for life on the earth and this in turn is giving or covering the man's basic requirement that is food fiber or water so terrestrial and water ecosystem is where the natural resources are residing and that they are the ones which are actually forming an environment which is conducive for the life on earth and that is how they are covering the man's basic requirement that is that of food fiber and water so terrestrial and water ecosystem is very important for us it is providing us food fiber and water so some of these functions of the ecosystem are essential to man so without them the life of man wouldn't exist and these are that of air and water depuration so the impurities of air and water are being cleansed by the ecosystem in itself the climate control which is also being done by the environment surrounding us the nutrient cycle so how the nutrients are flowing in a particular cycle is what is essential to man at the same time soil fertility because soil fertility is what gives rise to the food production in the earth so ecosystems like beaches woods lakes high mountains secluded valleys are our ideal places for recreation tourism meditation permits uh, permits our society and economy to develop so these are the ecosystem which are not essential to man the other ones were essential to man but these are just for our recreational and tourism purposes 50% of the world's population are still engaged in farming forestry and fishing so majority of our population is still working in the primary sector so this proportion becomes 70% if we take sub sahara asian and pacific countries alone so the emphasis of this particular point is that such a huge amount of world's population is directly dependent on the ecosystems that is the environment surrounding us and in return they are actually dependent on natural resources so natural resources the direct dependency on natural resources is for a population of about 70% all over the globe 25% of the world's countries have economies that still depend almost entirely on the sectors above so these uh, sectors like farming forestry and fishing 25% uh, of the world's country is dependent on them farming alone produces 1.3 trillion dollars of food and fiber a year farming in itself that is if you uh, take uh, forestry and fishing and allied sector out of agriculture 
farming alone is producing this much amount of money worth of food and fiber a year now what are the components of environment so the first component is abiotic and the next one is biotic so biotic is basically related to the living part and abiotic is non living part so this is this would clear your idea about the basic definition of biotic and abiotic let's have a look so abiotic component of environment is energy energy is all around us radiation that is also around us temperature surrounds us all the time water uh, then you have atmospheric gases and wind then fire gravity topography soil and geologic substratum so these are the abiotic ones that is the inorganic components of the environment biotic ones would include green plants non green plants the decomposers the parasites the symbionts animals and man so man comes under the biotic component of the environment so these are all part of the environment but they would fall either under biotic category or under abiotic category the living component of the environment would be majorly known as biotic now let's have a look at the important terms this becomes important from the point of view of an exam so when you talk about ecotone it is a zone of junction between two or more diverse ecosystem so if there is an ecosystem surround having this particular boundary there is another ecosystem existing in this particular area but then there is a zone of coincidence over here so this particular zone is known as ecotone so if you look at the world map or if you look at a particular globe you would see that when the more northern part of the particular map you go you would find that the temperature declines so there becomes a particular boundary in which let's say this particular region on the map is coinciding with this particular region here the temperatures are very low so it's pretty pretty cold over here in the northern part and here the temperatures are quite high because they are nearer to the equator so the part of area where the transition of temperature is actually beginning to feel would be known as your ecotone so this is how you would remember ecotone as a concept the next is that of niche a niche is a unique functional role or place of a species in an ecosystem so the unique functional role of a particular species would be known as its niche function it is a description of all biological physical and chemical factors that a species needs to survive stay healthy and reproduce so consider the example of an earthworm so what an earthworm does is it resides in the soil it uh, feeds on the microbes over there and, and it uh, excretes in the soil and that gives you soil fertility so that is a function solely of that of earthworm however there are other species existing as well which gives rise to the soil fertility but let's for the sake of example consider earthworm alone so the function of soil fertility is solely lying on earthworm's abilities so that particular function would be known as its niche because that function is being done only by the earthworm the next is that of biome the next term so the terrestrial part of the biosphere is divisible into enormous regions called biomes so you would be able to see that the environment or the ecology existing in a particular area if it re remains uniform over a large particular part it would be known as biome these are characterized by climate vegetation animal life and general soil type so in a biome the climate would be more or less uniform vegetation that would be particularly specific to the biome the animal life it would be diverse although but it wouldn't be existing in different sort of biome and your general soil type so soil type of a biome would differ from another biome soil type biosphere biosphere is a part of earth where life can exist so you we all know that biosphere consists of atmosphere in which the air exists hydrosphere in which the water exists and lithosphere that is your land so the area where all three lithosphere atmosphere and biosphere are coinciding so the common area which is the shaded part over here would give you biosphere that is where the life is existing now biodiversity biodiversity is the range of variation found among microorganisms plants fungi and animals so this is just the variation amongst the organisms and plants existing 
Ecology also provides information about the benefits of ecosystems and how we can use Earth's resources in ways that leave the environment healthy for future generations. So ecology is providing information about the benefits of ecosystem. This is what we are getting to learn from ecology because it's a study of the nature, right? Study of the home which we talked about. And that would give you the idea about how you should be utilizing the Earth's resources so that you leave the environment healthy for future generations. You should not be exploiting the resources to an extent so that the future generation who are getting born or who are about to be born should not be deprived of those resources. So this particular aspect is known as sustainable development. You are leaving a better world for the future generation. So from the study of microscopic bacteria growing in a fish tank, to the complex interaction between thousands of plants and animals. So in this particular aspect, what you're doing is you're studying even the microscopic bacteria growing in a fish tank. That is, it is just an example. Basically, what it is emphasizing is that you are studying a minuscule dependency of the nature and you are also reading the complex interaction between thousands of plants and animals. So everything basically comes under the study of ecology. You are studying the entire aspect or the broadest of the possible aspect of the ecology so that you get to know how you can be utilizing the earth's resources and how the species are dependent on each other. Ecologists also study many kinds of environment. The, eco the study of ecology is not subjected just to one particular kind. They are studying almost all kind of environment. For example, ecologists may study microbes living in the soil, under your feet or animals and plants in a rainforest or the ocean. So you can see that they might be studying microbes, microbes as small as uh, that they are living under your feet. They are studying that particular aspect as well as they are studying animals and plants residing in a rainforest or ocean, the bigger ones like whale and uh, sharks and those type of bigger organisms as well. The many specialties within ecology such as marine, marine ecology would be studying about obviously for the ocean. Then you have vegetation ecology and statistical ecology. So these are the specialties within the ecology and they provide us with information to better understand the world around us. So the more you study, the better you understand the world. This information also can help us improve our environment, manage our natural resources and protect the human health. Now, what do we do to improve our environment? Pollution is one aspect that we should be taking care of because pollution affects our environment. So ecological research identifies causes of pollution in air and water bodies. So the more you study, more you do research, you get to know that what is the cause of the pollution. And once you get this information, you take action. Citizens and governments are able to take necessary steps so that you better the environment non-native or introduced species invasion so in some nat non-native species that is that of plants animals microbes and fungi which are not originally from the given area threaten our forests croplands lakes and other ecosystems and the introduced species compete with plants and animals that were originally there often damaging the environment in the process. So what is the point of this particular study? So you would be uh, witnessing many type of news as that of, uh, let's say, consider the case of Kerala floods uh, lately. So what happened was the, the area, the land of uh, uh, Kerala was flooded by uh, the water, obviously the rain water and the ocean water also crept in. So what happened was many species which were not particularly uh, residents of Kerala and the biome surrounding Kerala actually got access to the areas of Kerala. And now that they have started residing over there, they are threatening the original habitants of that particular area. So that is what is the invasion of the non-native species. At the same time, so this was basically natural process, a natural process. So this is how the nature acts and sometimes you don't want certain elements but they end up uh, invading your space nonetheless. When you talk about introduced species invasion, so what happens is 
a government makes an effort that okay so this particular uh, variety of tree should be planted in let's consider india for example so if we import the seeds of a particular tree so that we can grow it on our land so that we end up making more wood for our people but in the process what happens is since that particular imported uh, seeds of this uh, tree are not native to the space we don't know how is it going to affect it so what happens is it ends up competing in a better way with the existing species over there so what happens is it consumes the more resources which should have been consumed by the native ones so what happens is it threatens the existence of the present species over there the native ones so this is the invasion of species in a particular area public health so natural services the ecologists are studying and they are discovering that marshes and wetlands filter the toxins and other impurities from water so based on based out of the studies of these ecologists we are now aware of the fact that marshes and wetlands are important for the filtering of toxins and impurities from the water similarly there are other services being provided to us by the nature so this knowledge is being provided to us by ecology biomedical contribution so ecologists have discovered that many plants and animals produce chemicals that protect them from predators and diseases right so some of these chemicals have been synthesized by scientists or harvested from organism and used to treat human diseases consider that uh, there is this area and humans are getting affected by a particular bacteria or virus so all the humans are falling sick but uh, the biologist or the ecologist observe that the existing species b could be anything let's say deer they are not getting impacted by the bacteria which is very prevalent in the area or the virus the virus is not impacting this particular species the deer for example so scientists are actually getting amazed by the very fact that how come that this prevalent virus is not affecting this particular species so what happens is they do a research or study on this particular entity that is let's say deer we have already considered deer they would end up finding that the deer is producing certain sort of chemical which is actually giving it immunity so that it fights against the virus so ecologist after recommending that this particular uh, chemical that deer are synthesizing can be used to provide immunity to humans as well so this is what is known to you as biomedical contribution same thing can be used if you consider the example of herbs uh, existing in a particular area